Hey, he was a leper. Ever felt that way? Ever felt like you didn't fit in? Ever felt like there was no place you could ever feel a part of? No party you'd be invited to? Ever felt that way? Zacchaeus did. I did. And so all of a sudden, Jesus goes walking by, and all the crowd is watching him, and Zacchaeus is up in the tree holding on. Can you imagine what it must have been like for Jesus all of a sudden to stop and look up at you? Zacchaeus, come down quickly. I want to hang out at your house today. <laughs> so he gets down. Now all the rest of the people, it says in the scriptures, are grumbling because he's a sinner. Why did Jesus, the holy man, go and spend the day and eat a meal with a sinner? But don't you understand? Don't you understand that Jesus didn't come to save all the beautiful people, whoever that is. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to call us. Jesus came to look specifically for us. For the little girls inside you ladies who are sitting there wondering, could anybody love me? Am I sufficient? Am I enough? For you, the little boys and you guys out there who are sitting there wondering how big, how buff must I be to make these girls believe that I can take care of them so that maybe one of them could like me. Don't you understand that Jesus came for every one of us? That he loves us so much and that he is going to keep coming after us. He's going to keep calling us. He's going to keep calling you. He's going to keep pursuing you because you are worth pursuing. You are the prize that he seeks. Your heart is the heart that he wants. Your life is the life he wants to share. And he wants to free us. Free us from the brokenness. Free us from the lies that make us think we are insufficient and not worth dying for. But he did it. He died for us. He came after us. There is nothing he has not done to come to you tonight and say, I love you. I love you so much. I'm dying for you. That is how much he loves us. That is how much he wants us. That is how much he wants you and I. But we have to decide. Because you see, once Jesus said, Zacchaeus, get down. Zacchaeus had a choice. He could have stayed in the tree and said, Oh, Lord, I'm just no good. I'm terrible. Forget it. I can't do it. And stay up there. But what happens? What is it that makes this man come down from the cross and immediately upon this interaction with Jesus say, Lord, I promise you right now that if I have stolen any money from anyone, I will repay everyone back. What makes someone do that? What makes one of the apostles drop their nets and get up and follow him? What makes them at the end of their lives choose to die for him and for the message that he entrusted to them? What is it that makes martyrs in the church choose to die for this faith? What is it that makes everybody continue to pursue this Christ? And hold on. Because it can't just be a bunch of rules. It can't just be a bunch of ritualism. It can't just be about do's and don'ts. It has to move so far beyond that. Don't you understand? The law is here to show us how to get into the relationship. But once the relationship is established, there is no longer a need for the law. Why? Because once love takes over, you don't need somebody telling me that I shall not kill my wife. I love her. I don't need a law to tell me to do that or not do that. I just need the love. I just need the relationship. I just need to be connected to the person who is the source of all love. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you deem is important in your life. But I'm willing to bet that you're very much like I was. A person who looked for all the answers that the world had to offer. But you know, we're not really trained to be Christians in this world. We're trained to be hedonists. We're trained to pursue pleasure and avoid pain. But what happens when Jesus says, if you're going to be my follower, you need to pick up your cross and come follow me. You see, salvation is free. Jesus did it with his cross. 
He died for us. We didn't earn it. None, nobody here is good enough to get it. And nobody here is good enough to get to heaven, which is really a relationship with God for eternity. On our own. John 14, 6. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's through this relationship with Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, that we come in union, communion with the living God. But then Jesus says, but if you want to follow me, you see, I've made it free for you. Salvation is free. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, <coughs> salvation is free, but discipleship costs everything. I'm not going to blow smoke. I'm not going to tell you that it's easy. It's not. Because you know what? Like the scripture says, wide is the road that leads to destruction. Everybody takes that big current that's going down the wide road. It's easy to go that way. It's easy to stay home and watch our television and not do anything and not spend any time trying to reach out to God and get to know Him. It's easy to do that. What is difficult to do is enter into a relationship, as you well know, with human beings, let alone God, and consistently work at staying in that relationship. Consistently working hard to do that. Consistently fighting to maintain the relationship and reconcile it when we screw up. And asking for forgiveness. But we're not good at that. We're good at making mistakes and then we run. And we're good at cutting relationships and getting out. But I'll tell you what. If you establish a relationship with Jesus Christ, I can tell you because I did it in 1979, my senior year of high school. I have never, ever been alone since that night. Ever. And I've been through, through some pretty crummy, crummy things. Some things in my marriage, some things with my kids, some things with my extended family, some healing that took place, going back to that eight and a half year old little boy. I have never been alone again. Ever. But you have to choose. You have to make a decision. You have to decide. Going back to what, what um, Bob asked last night. What is your life all about? Is it all about choosing to spend and invest the rest of your life on some pursuit in the world that's going to last 80 years? What about the rest of eternity? What about the rest of eternity? What about the rest of eternity? We spend so much time working on the temporal, the, the time here on earth, that we spend no time preparing for eternity. No time learning the truth. What is it that makes the first century church, those Christians, choose to die for their faith than to say no to God? 